I know that you you work with the stuff that they bore you about all the, the pictures of church and the family. Uh, but how was the uh, work with the character? The, 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 for you, what Churchill means for the United Kingdom? Yeah. And for the world? Yeah, okay. really for the world, yeah, yeah. I mean, I try to find other aspects to his nature that have not have been examined in other books. So I insisted on having the earliest possible portrait of him, which is there's a shot of him as a as a little boy of four, which has never seen the light of day before. Yeah. Uh, and they coloured it in as they did in those days. So then I got his early school reports where he suffered at school because he was beaten and diffi difficult and unhappy at school. So he would often write to his mother with exes and say, come and see me, come and see me, which she very seldom did. Um, but what he loved about it was she was American, his mother. So he had a very English father and an American mother and a very young mother too. Um, she was no age, about 20, I think, when she had him. So she was devoted to him. His father was less devoted to him, but in a very English way. So I just put more in about his childhood than, than most people would do on the whole, because he, when he went to school at seven, it was a bad school. They beat him and he was unhappy. Then he went to Harrow and he wasn't happy there. And he wasn't very accomplished as a academic. Academically, he wasn't accomplished. So then he found his relief in, in the cavalry, you know, because he joined the army. Uh, and, um, and that's by the time he was 21, he'd fought in six campaigns. So he knew his destiny. And he always made sure he had a white horse. So everyone would see him. Of so from a very early age, he knew the, um, the significance of PR. He knew just how powerful it was. You know. uh, and he used it all the way through, all his way through his life. So if there was a chance of a photograph, he, he was ready for it. He was always ready for a photograph. Seldom turned down a photograph. Even during the war, you know, some yeah. tough times. But um, so you no, know, it was fascinating to see, and then a remarkable end. And he still affects this country. People talk about two Chilean speeches. Where are the speakers like that now? No, no, they don't exist. There's no one who can match him. And the oratory, not just the oratory, but the poetry and the ability to perceive beyond the immediate. That he could do. Very few politicians do that. So we had a giant in our presence. And the pygmies just stabbed him, you know, over Gallipoli. Yes. And very, you know, and, and he made his life a misery for many years. So he was abandoned uh, for 10 years, between 1939. Then when the war came along, they took a risk. They brought him back then. But he was 65. And that was all, 1939, that was all. Suddenly, he's there, he's back. And, you know, his background of not accepting defeat under any circumstances carried the war, basically. He was the inspiration for our victory. Yes. He didn't make 100% right decisions, but the underlying basis was for six years until he was 71 he carried the weight of this country and the rest of the world on his shoulders but he knew he couldn't do anything without the americans so he was constantly straddling the the atlantic going to america to new york to the president and saying when you're coming you know when, when's it going to be so in grimmer days it was for the americans Pearl Harbor, he knew that Americans would come in on this side. Thank God they did, but he never beat them. No, of course, no. Casablanca was a relief. Yeah, indeed. absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And it says that that night, Churchill slept. So, yeah. <laughs> slept, yeah. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Indeed that's right. so, yeah, yeah. No, giant figure, giant figure. And, you know. An honor to be able oh, to do Oh, yeah, that. absolutely, yeah. And to read what he had to say and read the letters and see the original letters and yes. amazing and the little things he had from his childhood, quite extraordinary.
the making of the man, you know. It's amazing how people can be made in isolation and abandonment if they have a positive outlook and know that there's a destiny beyond the pain of the present. And that's what I think he's always had. Yeah, self-confidence. Self-confidence, even when he was bullied. and It's beyond self-confidence, really. It's really a, an inner belief somewhere that... Yeah, an inner belief. Uh, um, that because he had, I don't think he had much confidence as a child. Um, but he just suddenly, I think, was in in his spirit, you know. And people talk about this, and they recognise even when he was a child, there was just something that marked him out, you know. Uh, he probably quite a pain to be in the class with him, you know, because he wasn't very bright. At school. He sensed, you know, yeah. Yeah. Magician, genius, when it comes to political genius. Yeah. Where are they now? We haven't even got a magician. Yeah, but they, they might be some, but uh, they're very hidden. Yeah, very, <laughs> very deep in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you, Max, My pleasure. for this interview. And uh, I hope that you visit again us. In that would be Dragon very nice. Any time you want. <laughs> no, no, no. We will do our best to Thank have you. you among us again. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Um,